United States have risen in massive demonstrations in response to a leaked draft Supreme Court decision, which is set to overturn Roe v. Wade. On the evening of May 3rd, thousands of pro-abortion activists rallied in several U.S. cities, including New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., and Boston. As per the draft obtained by Politico, the Supreme Court is set to overturn the historic Roe v. Wade ruling of 1973, which could eliminate abortion rights for millions of women. They do not represent us. We have different interests than them. Five people should not have the power over millions of bodies across this country. The draft decision was penned by Justice Samuel Alito, a conservative George Bush appointed judge. Roe v. Wade is the only federal protection for abortion rights for women across the United States. Without it, millions of women in conservative states would be at the mercy of right-wing politicians who have expressed a desire to eliminate abortion altogether. The ruling of Roe in 1973 was based on the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, which enshrines a right to privacy. The court at the time had determined that this right to privacy protects a woman's right to choose to have an abortion. Justice Alito disputed this in his draft decision. According to him, the Due Process Clause indicates that any right that is not guaranteed in the Constitution must be, quote, deeply rooted in this nation's history and tradition, end quote. Alito believes that abortion does not fall under this category. According to him, quote, an unbroken tradition of prohibiting abortion on pain of criminal punishment persisted from the earliest days of the common law until 1973, end quote. In reality, abortions were legal and widely practiced in the United States until around 1880, they were outlawed in what some view as a reaction against a growing feminist movement at the time. Right-wing politicians are already carrying out a massive attack on abortion rights in the United States. In Texas, conservative politicians generated nationwide outrage when they passed SB 8, which bans abortions after six weeks, before many women even know they're pregnant. This is what's going to happen to the fate of people with uteruses who are going to be put in jail for determining the fate of their own bodies. They're going to be working for 17 cents an hour to make money for the people in that building, to make money for the people who just spoke on this podium. We don't need capitalism. We need a government that is based on the people and what the people need. It doesn't make sense for why 200 people decide the fate of over 300 million people. Or the fate of the world with their billions and trillions of dollars that go into debt projects that kill people all across the world. Some consider 2021 to have been the worst year for abortion rights in many years, with 108 restrictions on abortion passed throughout the country. Since the Roe v. Wade decision, 1,338 restrictions have been enacted, 44% of those within the last decade alone. The mass movement for abortion access has long advocated for passing the Women's Health Protection Act, or the WHPA which would render all of these restrictions illegal. But the Senate recently voted down the WHPA after two conservative Democrats joined the entire Republican Party in voting against the legislation. Since the draft decision was leaked, thousands of protesters rallied throughout the U.S., urging the people to fight back and chanting that abortion is health care. More actions have been called for the coming days. These upcoming protests will build on the months of organizing against abortion restrictions that were catalyzed by SB8 and fueled by events such as the arrest of Lizelle Herrera in Texas, charged with murder for an alleged abortion. Time will tell if a mass movement of women in the streets can sway the court's decision on abortion.